So notice that I get a dotted line when I'm trying to create a circle and I can locate the center by locating the two midpoints there. So I'm going to create a circle. I don't know exactly how big I need it yet because I haven't looked at the dimension. I'm going to go back and choose the sketch tab and we'll draw a rectangle to create the slot. Again, slot's not centered, but again, remember it's sketch constrained, so the constraint part will help us in the positioning of these features. Let's go ahead and add some dimensions. The circle needs to be 0.88 in diameter. So right now I'm 0.93, excuse me, 0.893. I'm going to go 0.88, and so it's going to be very close. Now that slot needs to be 0.12 in height. And it needs to be dimensioned, and so I'm magnifying it up, that it's 0 0.06 from the center to the top line. So I'm going to put a dimension from the center point to the top line, and that needs to be 0 0.06. So that's now centered. Since we're going to cut away this part, I'm going to go ahead and trim part of this away so it all becomes one component when we extrude and cut this through. The trim tool up here on the top and the extend work exactly the same way. They actually work the way that design software should work. When you highlight a surface, left mouse click, it goes away. It trims it back to the feature that you're working with. And there you have it. So now we've got a slot which is extended a little bit farther, which is fine. Matter of fact, it's, it's advised to break that surface out on the outer edge. So now we've got our position because we located it in the center. And if you want, it still says in the bottom that we need four dimensions to make this official, to fully constrain it. The first dimension we're going to place is the dimension between the center and the outer edge. And this will give us a distance. Now that's not a critical distance, but now notice that it says three dimensions are needed. I'm going to go ahead and dimension the circle to the top line. It says that it needs to be 0.978. That distance, let's undo that and try it again. Let's dimension from the center to the bottom, and that needs to be 1.50. So now we're down to two dimensions. We'll dimension from the center to the outer edge, and that needs to be 1.50. We're down to one dimension. But notice that dimension is showing us that the lines here are black, which indicates that it's not 100% official on distances of the bottom. So I can make these two equal, and notice that it's now fully constrained. So how did I know to, to deal with that one on the bottom? Because it was a different color. Instead of blue, it was black. It was the last item that did not get changed in color. So making it equal distance, once we cut that rectangle, these became two independent lines, and we needed to tie the two together. The nice thing about the upper corner is that it provides us the ability to change our view quickly. So I can click the house and go into a 3D mode. I can click the, the word front and it moves me back to the front view. I can click the corner of the box and it moves me around the object to see different features. And as long as I click the home, it always goes back to this view. I'm going to finish my sketch and extrude my shape. Now I have to choose the shape that I want to extrude. So I want to make sure that I left mouse click and not the complete profile. I just want that feature. Uh oh, that's not going right. The extrude as a as a box that has a pull down, it also has a pop-up area. 
the information that's in the pull down here in the dialog is the same information that's here on the screen. So what I need to do is change the direction and that I want to use it to cut and not um, I want to use it to cut and not join. So the first thing I want to do is choose the down arrow next to the join and choose cut. Notice that when I immediately do that it immediately changes the direction to cut it through the object. It knows where the object is. Now it also says distance and I can change this from distance to all to where it will cut all the object. One inch is definitely thick enough if I wanted to type in an exact value but I could either say to the next surface or the body or I can just say through the whole part and that's what I'm going to do is say through the whole part. You'll notice that it shortened it up just to the size that it needs. When we're finished I'll choose the check mark. Congratulations we've now cut out part of the object. Now the last feature that I need to create is a hole and we actually have a hole command to do that. And we have two different holes that we need to develop. The first hole is here at the top and then we have two similar holes on the bottom. So we'll do deal with the first hole at the top. I'll choose the hole command and the first thing that it wants to know is what face and when I'm in a dialog box it'll give me red arrows to show me what items I need to select. The first thing that's highlighted is the face. Well, I definitely want to put it on this face but notice that I don't have a pointer I've got a little cross here. And so I want to put it on this face approximately here. We're just going to ballpark it. It's not exact because we're going to be adding references to it. So the reference is, and that's what it's asking me now, is picking a reference surface. So my first reference surface is going to be this edge of the part. And from that edge, this object needs to be 0.25. And I'll change that in just a second. The second reference edge is going to be the back. All right. Now that I have the two references, I can select and change the values. So the first one is 0.31. Notice that the value changes here in the dialog. And I'll select the second or the original reference that I had placed. And I'll hit the enter key on that. That's that reference. And this reference I need to make as 0.25 and it automatically updates the reference values. Now this says that it's a drilled hole and I've got four different hole types to choose from. Drilled, counterbore, spot face, or countersink. Well the notation that I see on the drawing indicates that it is a counterbore and being a counter bore I need to select the counter bore option so I get all the, the feature sizes that I need. The counter bore is going to be 0.38 otherwise known as a 0.375 that's just rounded to two decimal places. The depth is going to be 0.31 so I need to change the depth of the counter bore to 0.31 now the actual hole drill size is a quarter inch all the way through. So this is going to drill all the way through as a quarter inch. Across the bottom I have the choice of either having a simple hole which has no threads in it, a clearance hole which allows me to put a bolt through it and then clamp it into another object, a threaded or a tapered threaded hole. So many times you'll get a threaded hole and you can thread just the bottom component or thread just a portion of the hole itself. For our drawing purpose today we're going to do just a simple hole. We'll choose OK and it creates the hole. 
Now one of the nice things about this box, or the square up here, this cube, is that if I left mouse click and hold it, I can drag it, and I can see that the hole went all the way through. I can also see that, the, that there's a counter bore inside. And if I get it all messed up in the angle, all I've got to do is hit the house, and it goes back to the original shape. We have two more holes to drill, one on each side. Could we drill them as one single command? Yes. That would require us to put a sketch in what are known as center points. I'm going to do it as two separate holes, keep it simple, allow you to practice your hole command. Hole on the face, reference one, reference two, reference value from the back, 0.31, from the edge, 0.25, simple drilled quarter inch hole. Choose OK. Now I can't really see a good location here, so I'm going to use the box, spin it around. How did I do that? I just picked the opposite corner. And now I can choose the hole command and do the same thing over again. Ballpark it. Reference 1, reference 2. Second reference is 0 0.31. First reference, 0.25. And we now have a, another hole. What I didn't have to go through the whole thing because it remembered all the details before. Look at the top check the holes are they aligned they should be remember that we use the same settings on all of them so all the holes should be aligned congratulations you've now created a basic shape one final thing that I'm going to show you how to do which makes it really fun when you want to print this out in color to show your friends or to hang it on the refrigerator at the very top I can select materials for my part there is a huge range of materials to choose from When I select the material, it changes the color. Everything from blue, clear, polished, to expanded metal, to red hot metals, to rust, to wood. You can do polished aluminum, which adds reflectivity because you can see how the light changes with it. But this gives you a little bit of a unique capability to see the different part with a unique color. Don't forget to hit the save. Again, save copy as, excuse me, save as, and save as, and you're saving it as 829. Do you want to replace it? Yes. All right. You can just also just hit the save button up here at the top if you get the error message since you've already named it. This wraps up our first video on basic part creation. Remember to take it with steps. The four step process, sketch, constrain, develop, detail. We did a sketch, we constrained it, we developed it into a 3D object. We then used the uh, sketch command again, created the shape in the middle, constrained it, and then developed it into a cut. We, the third step was that we added the holes, which are, again, feature-based objects that we were able to, to utilize. We'll utilize this part again as we get to the part detailing or the drawing creation uh, step, which is in video number two.